Hi there. I'm going to paint a study of a hare's head today. So um, I'll just give you the materials list. Okay. I've drawn the hair on hot pressed paper, which um, I haven't actually stretched it. Normally I stretch it, but I've just taped it down with masking tape today. Um, it's just going to be on this 100% uh, cotton rag. Saunders Waterford paper. It's 200 GSM or 90 pounds in weight. And I've just done a pencil drawing of it there. Then the brushes I'm going to use are a size size one round. Some I've got two uh, size three rounds because I use these a lot for blending. So I've got two of those. And then size six round. Then I've got some flats. A tiny quarter inch flat. This is also just a bit bigger than a quarter inch flat and this as you can see is a bit thicker. Doesn't really matter just a quarter inch flat will do and then this is um, I think it's an inch flat or a three quarter inch flat and it's actually an acrylic brush so I use this for um, you know pressing in and lifting out colour at times because it's a good brush for lifting. So those are my brushes. <clears throat> then the colours these are all Winsor & Newton professional artist quality, not student quality, artist quality paints um, because I believe they really give you the true feeling of watercolour whereas sometimes student quality paints can be uh, full of different fillers and things and not so much of the pure pigment, okay? So if you can stretch to it, get artist quality, even one or two tubes. So I've got raw umber, then French ultramarine blue, Winds of Violet, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber and for the speck in the eye I'll be using a little bit of titanium white or if you've got Chinese white um, <coughs> or any of the opaque whites that's fine. Okay so we get down to the actual painting in the next clip. As I look at the photograph of the hair I can see that there's quite a bit of you know grey and charcoal-y uh, black in the ears there and then the face has got a mixture of soft buffs and tans and sands and a little bit of grey as well and then the eye has got definitely a bit of sort of a rusty colour there which we'll use the burnt sienna uh, to get that for. Alright so I'm just going to start off by wetting the hair's face with clear water I'm, wet, I'm going to wet everything, so I've just got a size 6 brush for that now. Let's just get the water on. I'm just taking care of my outline. Because the water will, um, the paint will only go where you've wet the paper, so you've got a bit of control, alright? If you watch my videos you'll notice that I you know repeat myself a lot of the time because my technique is the same obviously uh, for most of my paintings so sorry if I'm repeating myself to those people who've been watching this last few months since I've been uploading a lot of <coughs> videos so this is it's just a head and shoulder portrait so <coughs> I'm making the edge a bit ragged there on the shoulder. I don't want it to go straight across like that in a flat line because that would be rather ugly and not very arty. So uh, again just carefully doing the outline of the ears with this clear water. Let it soak in. This will give me a nice moist surface into which to drop the first washes I'm not going to try and achieve any sort of finish at this stage. You know, I won't be doing detail in the eyes, for example, at this point. I'm just going to get some soft veils of colour on. And also, uh, and I'll be putting some, I'll be making sure some of the areas are different tone, you know, a stronger tone. Where they need to be darker, I'll try and achieve that at this stage. So the important thing to show you, <clears throat> as ever, is the sheen on the paper. So if 
I can just yeah get that can you see there's a sheen there but it's it's damp in places when it's damp the sheen has gone off the paper let me zoom out a bit right some parts have got more water you know when I tip the board the water is gathering around the hair's nose so I'm just going to redistribute that and add a little bit more water to the whole face just to moisten it again more thoroughly. I'm just taking a brush full at a time and working it again all over the hair. It's quite warm today so the water will soak in quite quickly. And I don't want it to dry to the point of being damp where I can't see any shine on the paper. Because when you try and work in damp paper, the paint doesn't flow so well and you haven't got as much thinking time before hard edges start to appear. And then you're frantically trying to get some moisture added to the hard edge to, to reduce that. So that's why I'm re-wetting it now because I can see it's already starting to get damp and drying out right in front of my eyes, which I don't want. Let's look at it again now there right that's what you want all over again apologies for the slight buckle but i haven't stretched this paper this is a good example of you know what not to do i always tell my students to stretch the paper so you don't get buckling but i'm in a bit of a hurry this week i've got a lot on um but this is a practice run that i wanted to try out so that's the sheen that's ready now for us to start dropping in some color so I'm going to mix up a soft um, sandy grey. Now that's a little bit of burnt umber that I already had on the palette. And into that I'm going to put a speck, and I mean a tiny speck, you know, a forensic amount. Okay, see how strong that is? If you use an artist quality paint, you'll feel the strength of them. Um, right, so that's looking sandy. Uh, well, it's a sort of dulled, muted grey. So I'm going to drop that in where I can see grey. And again, this hasn't got to be exact, okay? I just want some changes in the hair's ears of grey, and then his face will have more uh, warmer earth tones in it. So let's drop some of that grey. Actually, I'm, adding a, I'm going to add a bit more French ultramarine blue to that mix because it's a bit, it's not grey enough. I needed to have a, a bit more blue in there. So there's more ultramarine going in. And I'll drop some there on the side of the face. Inside the ear there. It's a little sort of He's got a little broken bit. I think somebody's attacked him in the field. He's got some little tears on his ears there. Let's have a bit of that grey there on that side of the cheek. Right, before I go any further now, I've just unified that patch there. A tiny little bit around them, uh, the, the, the cheeks and his jowl. But I'm going to tip that now. Can you see that it's still... Yeah, got that sheen on it, yeah? But it's drying out quick on the nose. See, that's damp. That's not shining anymore. That's going to be a problem in a minute. So I'm going to paint over that because otherwise... Paint flowing into that will give me a back run because it's, if it's damp, butting up against a, a wet area, you'll get back runs. You've got to keep everything the same degree of moisture if you don't want a back run. I'm just letting this have a little run around. Let me zoom out again. Tip it 360 degrees, let it run. And soften. You can help it around a little bit, you know, if it's... If you suspect it's starting to dry in places, just get in there with a brush quickly and move it around. Right, so I've got some grey on the face. Now I want to go for a little bit of warmer colour so that's the burnt sienna a little bit of burnt umber and again it's that sort of liquid 
that sort of um, moist moistness. Add a bit more of that sort of orangey colour. There's definitely some of it around his eye there. And coming onto his shoulder, he's got a bit of that. And on his forehead. And a little bit going up into the ear there as well. A bit more there. And the neck, I want to make that a little bit more ragged. I'm squashing the brush down like that to give a ragged, torn look on the shoulder. Okay, so we've got a mix of warm and cool colours now. This warmer sort of rusty colour and the initial grey colour. It's starting to dry out really quickly. I'm just show you, can you see there's just that hint of sheen left, thankfully. So what I'm going to do now is, before I stop, is just, I, I've got a moist brush, this is a size 6 brush, which I've wetted and I've flicked it. But I'm not going to use a, a flannel to dry it or anything, and then I'm going to just going to Go over everything that I've done so far and sort of swooshing, straddling action. Just keep in contact with the paper. And what, what this will do is just unify everything a little bit. You won't lose all of the contrast between, say, the grey and the, the rust colour. But I just wanted to unify it a bit more. There, that's it. Right, now the last thing to do is I want to get some strong shadows in now. So that's going to be burnt umber with a bit of French, French ultramarine blue. Right, that's a much stronger hue than uh, what I've got on there at the moment. Actually, let's put a bit of burnt sienna in there as well, just to warm it up. I'm going to drop that in. So some key areas like under, you know, the back of the head and the neck, around the muzzle there, under the eye, in between the ears there, just to give the, the body some form. And there's definitely a much darker passage inside that one ear is very dark. So let's separate this ear from that one by putting a dark passage there. And again, let's just break that down. Then the top of his head. And let's just define the nose a little bit more. Top of his head has a few dark pieces on there. Right, that's got a bit more form. Now the last thing I'm going to do with this is soften all of those edges. So again, a moist brush, which I flicked, flick most of the water off, then blend those passages in a little bit more to the hair's face. Blend that around his, uh, so just under his nose there. Right, and I'm going to stop there and let that dry. So the painting is bone dry now and I'm going to get the eye underway. So the main colour for the eye was some um, burnt sienna. So we have that over the whole whole area okay 
including the black surround there because we'll go on top of it then with black. So that whole area we'll put as burnt sienna for now. And straight away I'm going to come in with uh, black, but not actually too black. I'm going to use some burnt ember, a tiny little bit of water for that, sorry, there we are, burnt ember and some French ultramarine blue, okay? So it's, it's a rich browny black, it's not a hard tube black, it's got a little bit of softness to it, a bit more natural than tube black, okay? So let's get that. This, this eye is going to look a little bit hard and very drawn initially, but then we're going to soften things down. So the pupil is there and the pupil is actually going up and touching the upper lid. You know, it's sort of hanging from the upper lid a little bit. It's not sort of starkly, you know, plonked in the centre of the eye. Let's make this a little bit wider. Right. It's nice and dark in there. Flares out a bit there. Right, so what we need to do now is we rinse that brush really well. It's a size 3 brush. I'm rinsing it and drying the handle. Then I'm dipping it in the water again and flicking it. Now I'm going to come along at the edge of that black outline of the eye and touch into it with those moist hairs of the brush and rotate and just soften that black line away a little bit. Rinse the brush again, flick it and let's do the same thing underneath. Okay, so with me a second. Okay, so I've just softened the eye in you know, to the face a little bit more. And the next thing I want to do is add a few more soft um, blackish brown lines just under the eye again, just to sit the eye in a little bit more with a few more layers. Into the, into the eye area so that it's not just uh, one dark passage. All right, and the next thing I want to do is to add a little bit of the opaque white with a touch of blue in it. So I'll just show you this. It's, uh, So it's a bit of opaque white and don't let this go anywhere near your watercolour paints because it will spoil them and then a touch of blue pigment into that so it gives me a soft opaque colour and I'm going to drop that in actually I need a little bit more blue it's not blue enough it's a little bit too white so a bit darker blue Drop that in. I'm going to rinse the brush. And now with this small size 3 moist brush, I'm going to touch into the edge of that blue and let it bleed. A little bit more into the eye 
and then very quickly I'm going to add a speck again of the opaque white just on one side just touching it in and it'll bleed into the moisture of the blue bit so hopefully that's given us a little bit of a highlight and similarly let's drop a little highlight down in the bottom right hand uh, curve of the eye and if it looks a little bit too set just get a slightly moist brush and blend that in a little bit I'm going to add a, a bit more burnt sienna to that rusty eye, you know, the iris of the, the hair's eye because it looks a bit pale now in comparison to the black pupil, doesn't it? So let's just make it a bit richer. There. Actually, that white is a little bit too dominant, so just take some of it out with that small size 3 brush. One last time I'm going to put one hot speck of the white now. So it's a mixture of hard and soft applications of the white. And again, you know, you need to be looking at it a bit further away to have the full effect of it. So we put some soft blue which I'm just going to put a bit more blue in back in there a bit of blue to give the eye that shine if I zoom back in now there that's as close as I can go before it goes out of focus sorry there, so hopefully that looks nice and soft now. So let's get a bit more colour on the face now. And I'm going to move to my sort of big flat, in, uh, flat brush now. I'm going to moisten that. And pick up some uh, burnt sienna, <coughs> burnt umber, and a bit of French ultramarine blue. I'm going to start strengthening the face now, so under here and there, muzzle. So the colour's gone on and I'm going to come along with a smaller round brush and soften those passages of colour in and up into the, just below the eye there, and soften all of that. Moisten your brush again, soften that little bit by his, under his nose. This is just a bit of modelling now, okay. I want some hard lines, like that hard line there. Then let's go a little bit darker above his eye, top of his head now. Because he's definitely got darker fur there. But I'm leaving a white rim there because that's he's got that those markings on his face. So let's drop a bit darker under there. And rinse my brush and soften that in so the brush isn't dripping with water but it's got enough moisture in the hairs excuse the pen <laughs> to soften the pigment in I'm going to join 
the cheek dark patch to the patch around his nose because that's quite defined there. And a bit more, a bit stronger burnt umber with a bit more French ultramarine blue. Let's go stronger just in the nape of the neck there, the back of the neck, <clears throat> and taper it away to nothing so that that sort of sets the neck connection apart from the head. And this darker burnt umber with French ultramarine blue around this part <coughs> of the back of the eye. Then going up into the, the ear that's behind the, the, the front ear. Okay, now I'm going to go for more French Ultramarine Blue in a darker sort of charcoal colour that I had in the beginning. Repeating that for this ear there. Okay. There's a darker passage there on this uh, eyebrow. dark there. <coughs> and I'll just soften that away. That's a bit too white there so I'll just blend more paint into that. Just bring that dark streak from his nose down there a bit more. That's better. Right, I want to lift out some colour now from under the eye. So I've got a thirsty brush, which is a brush that's been moistened really well. Then you, you dry it with the flannel and then you can lift out the paint. I'm lifting out a highlight under the eye. You might need to do it a few times because it'll seep back in a little bit. Just keep lifting it out. And now we're starting to shape the face a little bit more. There's a bit of a highlight down there. Press it in, rinse and lift the colour again. And above his eye, let's redo the highlight above his eye. There's a bit of a twist there as it goes away from his face. So we're starting to shape the hair's face now. Then there's definitely a paler highlight on right on under his nose, on those little sort of puffy round parts of his face. Those are paler. So we need to bring, uh, lift those out. And he's got highlight there, which we've already got. So now a little bit more dark in the inside of the ear, which is a French ultramarine blue. Burnt umber. This is a little bit too runny actually, but uh, <coughs> I want to get that on now because that, you know, it's really quite dark in there, isn't it? And we'll leave this pale here. So let's go in with this real, really strong dark. And some more there because it's still a little bit moist in the distant ear so we can drop that in and just carry a little bit of that dark down there are a few little dark markings on the face so I'll drop those in now while I've got it on my brush and while there's the nape of the neck going in again and while the paper is still moist tapering down and then soften all that off. I'm just using this feathering little sort of 
chipping in and cutting in where it tapers away, just a little bit of texture there. Maybe a few little sort of, you know, tufts of fur furry type markings now as this coming down onto the neck. Pressing the brush in and lifting, and that gives a, a bit of a velvety texture. So I'm just I wipe the brush a little bit more so it's not so down. Press the brush in and wiggle it, and then lift. And can you see it gives us a, quite a soft texture there? <coughs> There's a little bit of this colour very faintly on the outer rim of the the biggest ear, so we'll just put some of that in. And then moist brush, soften down to key that in a little bit more. Back in with a stronger dark, right in that darkest part of the ear again. So I'm just adding stronger French ultramarine blue and burnt umber in there. Now let's have a bit of that dark around the eye because the eye now and a little bit in the in the pupil the eye now is looking a little bit pale you know compared to the ear now we can put the shape of the nostril in which is do this with a soft uh, a small brush with a very fine cleft tapering away and a tiny little bit of dark suggesting the mouth in there. Okay. There's a few little a few little um marks there where his whiskers are coming out. So I'll just indicate those. Soften that in. So And then once more, let's have some strong burnt sienna and a bit of French ultramarine blue. Just really push the contrast around the eye. Some final strong shapes. And a few little breakaway tufts of fur on his head there. Moist brush, just soften that in. I've darkened the nose off a little bit more again. Right, I'm going to brush some of the black of the eye into the face with this slightly moist brush just to sit it, sit it in the face a little bit more strongly. And I think we'll stop there. Okay, if I can just move it off screen for you now. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of um, it's very quick hair uh, study of a hare's head. Okay, thanks for watching. 
Um, after the last piece of painting I did, I felt that I needed to put more dark into the hair's face. And so as you can see, I've, I've gone really boldly with, French, uh, with burnt umber and French ultramarine blue in these areas here. <clears throat> so I've really highlighted around this curve of the muzzle, all under the eye, the bone of the eye, the cheek, up on the top of the head and under the jaw there strongly and the back. And then I've unified the top of the head <coughs> with that distant ear like that. Okay, so I felt, I felt that it needed that. So again, you, you're constantly assessing your painting and, and what looks weak and what looks strong. Okay, so I hope that looks a little bit more lifelike now. Any questions, please uh, put comments in the box or you can email me at the email address that's in the description and I'll do my best to help you. Okay, thanks for watching.